Welcome to GoVM Lab, India's first job-ready VMware learning platform where professionals meet experts to revolutionize their VMware careers. So now let's move on to the next topic of our discussion that is NSX Edge architecture and its interfaces, right? So we'll just try to understand a little bit more into NSX Edge node architecture and what are the different interfaces we have it. So if you really look at the Edge node, right? This is how your Edge node looks like. So again, uh, during this discussion, let's take for the simplification purpose, let's take an example of Edge Node VM because we all very much familiar with the VM construct, right? So this is my Edge Node, which is in a VM form factor. So this is my ESXi host. As you could see that, this is my ESXi host. And one of the ESXi host, I have deployed Edge Node as a VM. Now, when you deploy Edge Node as a VM by default, because it's a, it's a managed entity by VMware, right? VMware has already given you a pre-configured appliance. So when VMware give you this pre-configured appliance, so you could see that it has a different type of interfaces. The very first interface, we call it as a ETH0 because it's a Linux operating system. It's not your hypervisor, right? Edge node, Edge node VM is not running VMware hypervisor. It's a virtual machine, which will be running your generic traditional operating system. So it's it actually running, it's it actually running one of the flavor of Linux operating system, right? So this is your Edge node which will be having the very first interface, we call it as a ETH0 and this would be your VNIC0. So your, I mean, you can consider something like this. This is my VM and my VM is having a multiple interfaces, multiple VNICs. So you all know that a one virtual machine can have multiple uplinks. What are those maximum count? Maximum 10 uplinks, eh, sorry, 10 VNICs can be assigned to a single virtual machine. It's a basic vSpan networking, right? So a single virtual machine can be configured with the 10 different VNICs, but in this edge node, when you deploy the edge node, VMware is actually configuring this VM with the five different VNICs, okay? So in this five different VNICs, the very first VNIC, what do we have it? VNIC zero, we call it as a ETH zero, okay? And this ETH zero is actually considered as a management interface. Management interface means whenever you configure edge node, it, it needs some IP through which you can actually log into the edge node and you can interact with the edge node. You can run some CLIs in the edge node, right? So I require some management connectivity. And that is where this management IP, whatever you defined it, that get assigned to this ETH0 interface of your edge node. So whenever you deploy edge node, during the edge node deployment, it will ask you, okay, give me the IP of your edge node. Give me the domain name of your edge node. Give me the default subnet gateway information. So whenever you provide this information during the edge node deployment, those IP configurations are going to be assigned to the ETH0 interface of your edge node. And that is the IP we use to interact or connect with the edge node. So that is what your first interface is all about it. The rest interfaces, which is your VNIC1, VNIC2, VNIC3, and VNIC4, if you really see, they also have ETH0, ETH1, ETH2, ETH3. Because it's a Linux operating system, the way Linux operating system or Unix operating system enumerate your network interfaces, it's always enumerate as ETH1, ETH2, ETH3, ETH4, right? So this is where it has enumerated these interfaces. But if you really see that, these interfaces have something called FP, right? So these this interface, ETH0 does not have any FP, but this ETH0 have a FP. So FP stands for fast path. Fast path interfaces. And if you remember, I was talking about DPDK. Right, so VMware have used this framework provided by Intel to for the faster processing of the NSX traffic. So this management interface is not an NSX traffic; it's a management traffic. I, you log into this, you enter this IP, and suddenly NSX edge node pops up. This is the management traffic, a very common VLAN traffic, whatever you will be having it, right? But this is your NSX traffic, and we want NSX traffic to be uh, high speed traffic, high speed performance. We need it. That is the exact reason. These interfaces are not a common interfaces. These interfaces design, I mean, uh, the, the way these interfaces are present in your NSX edge node, they're designed for a faster processing. So they have underlying implementation done by the Intel, where as when the packet comes, they have an implementation where the CPU processing happens way more faster than any generic packets, right? So that is the reason we call them as a fast path interfaces. So fast path interface 01 will be mapped to VNIC1, ETH1 will be mapped to VNIC2, ETH2 will be mapped to VNIC3, and ETH3 will be mapped to VNIC4. So that is where you have a 4 plus 1, 5 up VNICs for that virtual machine, right? And then, because this is a VM, and this VM has to peer up, 
the external network, right? That is where my ESXi host have these two uplink. So this is my VM and these VNIX, I'm going to map it to this uplink to send this packet outside of the ESXi host. Right. So obviously these are the VNIX. VNIX cannot go and send a packet to the external network. So I have to leverage my ESXi host uplink. And that is where we have the whole concept of uplink profile, which we discussed, right? So what we do it is basically we use this uplink and these uplink carry my traffic and you know forward it to the external network which could be my vlan back network so that is where it looks like and the switching obviously you know that we have a switch called vds right so you can actually have a distributed switch or a standard switch as well we usually don't use it so we always have a distributed switch to connect this vnic right i think the traditional networking what do we have so if you really see that what it says that nsxc data center edge node deployment require multiple different type of interfaces in vSphere virtual switch, we must allocate at least two VM NICs for the edge node. So what it's saying that the, the moment you deploy this NSX edge node, right? You should have at least two VM NICs for this edge node. That is a requirement. I mean, that, that is a requirement from VMware that at least two link you should reserve for this NSX edge node. Okay. What does that mean? So just imagine a scenario, this VM is running on running on a certain ESXi host. And whenever you have a ESXi host, you you make sure that these VNICs are these VNIC traffic can flow through two different uplinks. Like the teaming, whatever we do it in the distributed switch, right? A switch having a more than two uplinks, right? Which means if this uplink goes down, I have another uplink, take care of the traffic. So that is the reason we never ever want to have a single PNIC. Because if I just have a single PNIC connectivity, this uplink goes down, I have a downtime. And that is the exact reason it says that you should always have a, at least two uplink connectivity for the obvious reason, redundancy and failover. Then it says that the first interface must be defined for the management connectivity. This is what your first interface is for the management connectivity. And the other four interfaces are data path interfaces are dedicated for overlay traffic and uplink connectivity using the remaining VNIC. So this particular four trap four interfaces, what do you see that they are dedicated either for NSX either for VLAN traffic or your overlay traffic. Because why overlay traffic? If my ESXi node is sending any traffic, then this overlay traffic overlay interface will get this packet. And then whenever I need to packet to has to go out, then it's a VLAN uh, uh, NIC where the packet will go out and land into the external network. So that is what we have this fast path interfaces and this fast path interfaces of edge node are responsible for overlay traffic and the connectivity to the external network and which we call uplink connectivity, right? So if you really see, if you are preparing for NSXT L3 admin, NSXT consultant, NSXT domain expert, or NSXT solution engineer kind of profile, or if you are struggling to crack NSX interviews and want to prepare for NSXT interviews for better career growth and career opportunities, or if you are preparing for VCP NV or VCIX NV kind of advanced certification, then we would strongly recommend you to join GoVM Lab VMware NSXT Zero to Hero Deep Dive program. Now, this is a very uniquely curated in-depth learning program about NSXT networking and security capabilities. This program have received five star. This program have received five star rating from a lot of our careers. What this program have received five star rating from a lot of our learners and none of our learner have ever failed in NSXT interviews. And with this in-depth learning program, they have been successfully transitioned their career into VMware NSXT technology with the zero to hero deep dive program provided by GoVM Lab. Now, here are the key highlights of this program. As you could see that, it's 80 plus hours of intense learning program. We do provide 45 plus of hands-on lab to understand NSX networking security feature and its key capabilities. It will also help you to prepare yourself for not only VCP NV, but also help you to prepare for VCIX NV kind of advanced certification. Our mentors are having an industry experience of more than 15 years. And there are mentors who are having more than 10 years of experience on NSX technology, and they do hold all of the NSX certification. 
at govm lab you also get flexibility to have one on one in person doubt clarification session with our nsx mentor and this program certainly going to help you for preparing for nsx job interviews as well now here we have captured some of the feedback from our learners you can check out these feedbacks on our linkedin page and as you could see that we have received five star rating from all of the advance we have received a very good reviews and feedback from our learners now we do have captured some of the feedback from our learners for your reference if you want to check it out you can check out our linkedin page and you can find all of the learners reviews and what are they talking about go vm lab nsx t0 to hero deep dive program as you could see that and here we do have captured some of the feedback what we have received from our learners on our personal whatsapp chat as well so what are you waiting for if you are looking for a very in depth detailed learning program about vmware nsxt technology and you do have a passion to become vmware nsxt expert then reach out to us on this given phone number you can also drop us email on the given email id or you can website or you can browse our website as well so reach out to govm lab team and transition your so reach out to govm lab so what are you waiting for start your journey with govm lab so start your so what are you what are you waiting for start your nsxc journey with govm lab today itself thank you